now that I am starting to do seasonal TBRs, I wanted to do a seasonal TBR check-in at the end of every season. So I have really been stretching my winter TBR into the spring and also because here in Pennsylvania, March has felt extremely wintry. So I didn't really feel like reading my spring reads quite at the beginning of March or even the middle of March. I'm only just now getting to them. But I just wanted to give kind of my thoughts on the ones that I had read or why I hadn't finished or hadn't started some of the ones that were on my winter TBR. And so the first one that was on the TBR is The Heart of the Family by Elizabeth Gouge. And unfortunately, this was kind of uh, a not so great note to end the Elliot Family trilogy on. And this is a modern classic. She writes very... Um, cozy and picturesque settings and then really winsome and uh, emotionally engaging stories with really interesting characters. And so the first two I was totally enamored with and this third one, it definitely wasn't bad. It still got a three stars out of me. But it was just definitely, it didn't live up to those first two. And I was, I always worry about that, you know, when you read a series that the first ones you enjoy, you won't enjoy the following ones as much. And unfortunately that was the case with this basically two specific characters, the plot line that she had with them, just was really uh, perplexing to me. I wasn't sure, I, I thought it was just very, it fell flat. So unfortunately this wasn't as great a note to end the series on. Um, then moving on to another one that I didn't enjoy so much. So my winter TBR, I do think it's interesting to analyze it and see kind of how hit or miss it was. And the next one is Possession by A.S. Byatt. I saved this, uh, I didn't get to this until the month of March. And here is my literary fiction caveat. Basically, uh, being a Christian, I am a minority, which people don't like to talk about that a lot, but you really are a minority if you are a Christian. And um, I just find that the things that I really value are not on board with what a lot of uh, the world values. So to me, family and fidelity are two of the most important things. And I think that there is a bias against monogamy and fidelity in marriage and literary fiction. I see that more and more in the literary fiction that I try, and I'm more and more disillusioned with literary fiction. It just feels like the amount that I will enjoy is so small that I hate spending so much of my reading life on it and just trying to find those rare gems. And whereas I can read classics and I enjoy a lot higher of a majority of them. And so in Possession, the writing was really beautiful. It's a really cool notion, but uh, fidelity and uh, is just not a value in this. And I don't have the energy or the time to spend. I, I don't want to get all emotionally involved with these characters who I think are just making really harmful decisions. And this is a longer book, too. It's uh, 550 pages. So that, to me, is just not something I want to invest my emotions and, like, my reading energy in. So I was very disappointed by this because it's very talked up by people. But I think, like I said, I am in the minority. And so I think this bothers me more than it would some people. But I just, there was an emotional affair in this book. And I'm not going to spend my reading energy on that. Call me old fashioned. And I take that as a compliment. So moving on next is um, Bleak House by Charles Dickens. And I did thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy this. Victorian literature is definitely my comfort zone when it comes to classics. And this did not let me down. And I really found the characters of Esther Summerson and Lady Dedlock especially really fascinating. And I was just really uh, just really drawn to them. And then I also really liked the friendship between Esther Summers Summerson and Ada Clare. There was some really neat female friendship, which you don't always see in Dickens novels. So I really appreciated that. I loved the unfolding of the plot, how everything comes together at the end. The novel is put in two sorts of narration styles. The first is First Person by Esther Summerson and about her life living in Bleak House. And then the second uh, style of narration in it, which it alternates between those two, is third person and really talking a lot about this law case of Jarndyce and Jarndyce, which is an inheritance that for years people, different people have been pleading their case as to why they should be getting it. And um, so those definitely didn't quite captivate me as much as Esther's pieces, but they both did captivate me and I just found uh, myself kind of 
grieving for different things that happened in, at the end of this, but it definitely captivated me and I love Charles Dickens, so I really enjoyed this one and it was a great winter classic to read. The next one on the list is the, oh sorry, the next one on the list is The Shadow Rising by Robert Jordan and this is book four in the Wheel of Time series that I will be reading until I'm 90. Um, I have just decided that I don't want to start any more adult fantasy until I finish the Wheel of Time series because there is so much information and world building in this. I don't think I could keep like other big worlds straight because high fantasy I'm just astounded at the level of detail in this and I really want to be able to retain it well and I feel still that I'm not retaining the amount that I could. So I think I'm just going to stick it out and stay committed to this series and it is really enjoyable and I like having a go-to fantasy series and it's uh, my husband's favorite fantasy series so it's nice to have him to discuss it with after each one. And this, I can't really, it's a little boring to talk about these on my channel because there's so much that happens that would be spoilery, but I really do enjoy the series and I love the character development and seeing what happens with these characters. And next on the list is The Cross by Sigrid Unset, and this is the third in the Kristen Labrinstadter trilogy. And this is one of the most heartbreaking series I think I will have ever read in my lifetime. It was just so heartbreaking but so beautiful and I really liked the setting of medieval Norway. There is nothing else that I had read in that setting and it was really neat to see kind of how the whole entire culture was saturated by the church and how this affects all of the characters and also I think I mentioned this briefly when I was talking about this book that I think a theme of this is what are you willing to give up and sacrifice for uh, the things that you want in life and it's just really perplexing to see kind of how the different characters deal with this. So this is an absolutely beautiful series. I've heard some people compare it to Elena Ferrante's uh, I can't remember the name of her series. It's not a trilogy, it's more than that, but some people have compared it to her writing and how people who like that would really like this. So I do highly endorse and recommend this series. And then the next one on the series, another one that was a miss for me was Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. This is another thing with literary fiction where it was just so cynical about religion and it just really um, did not settle with me well. I could just tell that the author had uh, real gripes with people who have uh, religious convictions. They were made to look very silly. And I do think there is kind of a running uh, anti-Christian, anti-religion bias that you just have more social cachet if you are an atheist. So that just really set me off. In addition to that, I was incredibly bored by it. There were little snippets here and there of this beautiful, amazing writing that everyone had been talking about. But then other than that, I was just really bored um, in the other places. So it just... It wasn't a priority for me to give up my time on, unfortunately. I really did want to love it. I know so many people on BookTube who do love it. And then the next one is The Distant Hours by Kate Morton. And this was a miss for me. And a really weird reason that it was a miss. It is excellent writing. I loved The Forgotten Garden by Kate Morton. And so I started this really excited to have an atmospheric gothic wintry read. And what happened was it felt like The Thirteenth Tale. And The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield I read in the month of uh, November. And it was uh, just a really fun read and it was so unique and different from anything I had ever read. And so in my mind, this kind of setup uh, was just The Thirteenth Tale to me. And so as I'm reading, it just felt like the 13th tale and since I had just read the 13th tale in the fall it had made such a big impact on me for some reason it just really took away my interest from the distant hours. So that is totally a just me reason. That is not anything to hinder anyone else from reading it but that was kind of what happened to me. I think just it was the right book at the wrong time sort of that kind of instance. Uh, so unfortunately I did not end up finishing the distant hours. And then the last one is The Black House by Peter May, and this is one I still have not gotten to. So I think I'm just going to get to it whenever I feel like it, because I really still do very much so want to read it. And it is a, a sort of more thriller, suspenseful type trilogy, and it takes place in Scotland. Um, 
on the uh, or the Isle of Lewis. So it just sounds really awesome, kind of this like island setting for something really grisly that's going to happen. And um, I mean, I feel like reading mysteries all year round, as we all know about my channel. And I think I will just return to this, you know, I will start this at some other point in the year. So that's kind of my thoughts on my winter TBR. I really didn't love as many as I was hoping. And um, maybe my spring TBR selections will be more successful. But I wanted to update everybody on, you know, how I felt about all of those books. I will see you guys for another video soon and have a lovely day.